Welcome back, everybody. It's, I'm still here, Matsuda, and I'm still here joined with Jammer Not here. Uh, we were a bit surprised by game one, but we are up and ready for game two. What are your thoughts going into game two, Jammer Not? My thoughts were even, even though Easy Clap did run away with that game a little bit, there were some moments of brilliance from Left Cleat Gaming, but hopefully this time they'll start off on the right cleat and, you know, not. <laughs> allow the Lucian to snowball off of an early triple kill and then put themselves in a disadvantageous position. Yeah, we'll see whether or not these next bands are going to be adjusted based on game one or left clean is going to just stick with uh, the same bands. It might just be the same bands. Who knows? And we are going to see the Morgana band going through. Easy clap. Um, I'm assuming they just want to keep Luda on that Alstar, so not too surprised there. Yeah, he did a ton of work on the Alistar and was probably the most influential player in that in that game, honestly, aside from, you know, him, his proactivity in the early game did help get the Lucian ahead. And then he continued to, you know, capitalize on his advantage to the other parts of the map. So I can see that being a priority ban for them. Yeah, it's still the relatively same bands from game one. Uh, we see Left Cleat Gaming <laughs> uh, banning out the Blitzcrank again. I'm not sure. Maybe that's just in Luda's champ pool. They don't want to mess with this Blitzcrank. And we also see Kassen banned out. Uh, you know, Castle win. That's all I got to say on that ban. And we are waiting for the third ban of the Easy Clap to go through. And it's the Braum. Yeah, these are like the exact same bands going through from both these teams here. So we are looking to see, and it's going to be the Rise van going through from Left Cleat Gaming, and we'll see what Easy Clap decides the first pick, since they are blue side. Uh, maybe the Lucian? Who knows? Uh, I think they'd be okay if they first pick the Lucian, or they might just save it to counter pick the 80 carries again. And never mind, they're gonna go ahead and first pick the Graves. That's a okay. I think Graves' first pick is all right. Uh, we discussed how Graves really just doesn't have any bad matchups. The only bad matchup he has, if it, his uh, summoner controlling him, is not too good with the champion. And we are waiting to see for these first two picks of Left League Gaming. And they are going to be the Orn locked in and also the Oriana. Yes, it is going to be the Oriana. So Left League Gaming going to go ahead and take away that Oriana from uh, Puffles Mia. They maybe just didn't want to play against it. Yeah, maybe we're going to see a salty run back, I, uh, you know, from left fleet gaming i mean it might a slightly different ban with the rise but so far same picks on both sides yeah same picks maybe they're just gonna switch it up and we also see the lucian locked in so that's gonna be going over the dang rocks dang rocks or dang shore yeah dang shore yeah i don't know i i struggle with your name i'm so sorry or uh... we'll just call him dan i think dan's a cooler name you know we can call yeah, him Dan. For sure. Dan X? I don't know. And we're going to go ahead and see. Sign locked in again for easy clap. So I think they're just comfortable with their team composition from last game. So not expecting them to change it up. Except mid lane since their mid lane champ was taken away. And we see Varus locked in for left cleat gaming. Hmm, that's a bit different. Uh, but I mean, Varus is a strong pick. Normally, you do want to pair that with a. You do want to pair him with a Braum or Tom Kench. So we'll see if Easy Clap go and ban Tom in the second round. That's what I'd like to see, just so that the Varus can't. Even though he will have still have the, the strong crowd control in his kit, he won't have the safety that Tom Kench and Braum normally afford him. Yeah, I, I yeah I agree with you there. Uh. But yeah, 
I think Luda, them baiting out that Alistar, uh, a respectful ban going over to Luda. We did discuss how Luda did God tier work on that. Alistar looking to make those good plays that turned out to help win easy claps for his game. We also see LeBlanc ban along with the Jax and what I believe to be the Nunu ban. Man, I really was hoping to see some Nunu, but it, it seems like they're not gonna they're not gonna let it through the pick ban phase. But yeah, gotta have the respect. Alistair ban towards Luda. They don't want to get pain. He would just absolutely pancake and steamroll over this Varus pick without a Tom Kench, for sure. Yeah, and it leaves us to wonder what support picks and actually uh, what they're gonna duo up and it's gonna be the hundred percent white steel lane going over on easy cloud with that lucian and thresh bot lane and they're gonna go ahead and say all right you'll take our oriana we'll take away your syndra and i bet i can play syndra a lot better than you can so we see that contested but with left cleat gaming they're gonna lock in the brand as well gonna be paired up with that varus uh yeah, brand I'm a still more uh, I know you were excited about the wife steel bot lane. To me, I'm still more like brand support. Like, I know it's not it's not that out there, but we really haven't seen brand support see play in a while since the beginning of the new bot lane meta, where you know non traditional carries being placed in the bot lane with some Swains and Vlads. But but now you know seeing the brand and coupled with this. Such a wani pick. They're just going all AOE every single member. Left cleat are saying that we're not losing team fights this time. That's what their team comp says. To yeah, they do have a really good team fighting composition with Oriana, Sejuani, and the brand. And even the very yeah, they all their team all their uh, champions are really good at team fighting. Uh but looking at easy clap, they do have the Syndra, the Lucian. I'm actually looking to see whether or not Luda is able to put some work in on this Thresh here. Because if they're able to make some good picks on either the Brand or the Varus, then they'll absolutely stomp lane once again. But it's that threat of Brand that worries me, especially if you have a sign on your team, because that Brand passive doing per uh, percentage health damage is going to hurt Sound a lot more than he's expecting. Yeah, I, I'm... I'm uh, was very meticulous when it comes to item builds, and I think every single member of Easy Clap, even probably the Lucian, needs to get Merc Treads. There is so much CC on the other side, and almost all magic damage aside from the Varus, that with Merc Treads is just a no-brainer buy here for everyone involved. Maybe, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll maybe let it slide for Thrush, because I know he does like to have the Mobis. If it was Alistair, I'd let it slide, because Alistair is... What does he have? Like one of the lowest move speeds in the game, where yeah. you you just actually have to buy movies. I think Thresh can get away with Merc Treads, and I think he should go. Even though I know a lot of supports do like having the movies for that extra roaming potential. Yeah, we are loading in onto the Rift here. Game two, loading in. Easy clap versus is left cleat gaming. On blue side, we have Joystick Truck playing Sign in the top lane. Heimer Doodles playing Graves in the jungle. Puffles Mia playing Syndra in the mid lane and Dang Shore and Luda playing the 100% wife steal bot lane with that Lucian and Thresh. And we have Austin Gator 3 on the Ornigan. Gator Freak on the Sejuani this time. You're not um, Molten Liquid in the mid lane on the Oriana again. And Bot Clinical <laughs> on the Varus. And you're not worthy. Rocking the brand. Yeah, brand making an appearance, so that's obviously uh, very worrying. I think Syndra opting for that cleanse puffles me at respecting the CC on the side of on the side of Life Click Gaming, so nothing to worry about here. And we see that it's the same runes except Puffles Mia actually has D mats and Time Work Tonic, I believe, since they are starting with the corrupting potion and it's kind of reversed you know they did trade champions but yeah it's, it's still the same uh starting items for these players helpful me is still opting for that corrupting pot and the demats and molten liquid's just going to stick with the Dorn's ring and two health potions which is very interesting yeah actually. the only thing they changed were you know the actual keystones and champions but it's still a baller mid lane matchup here 
you know. So we'll see if it still does go in the favor of Molten Liquid, I think, last time did have the pressure on Puffles. Yeah, Molten, I think Puffles actually was able to hold his own, his own in that lane last game, so... Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so I'm expecting Puffles to do a decent job, especially on Sindri, who does have a better time applying pressure in the mid lane, especially with Scatter to the Weak. Uh, doing it as long as she gets those Scatter to the Weaks on point, then they should be fine here. Clinical Ots has forced a flash early, and man, if that isn't a death sentence, I don't know what is. But that flash being burnt out, this makes Luda's job so much easier now. As we do see these uh, magic skins as well for Thresh and Lucian here. As we see Puffles Mia going to collapse on Gator Freak here. Might be taken out a bit early. Forced to flash. Behimer Doodles is here. And the flash from side. Oh. And first spot goes over to Joystick Truck. Easy to clap already with the lead. As Luda connects the hook. No flash from the clinical odds. As Ignite goes out and Dangshore gets a kill early on. An easy clap. Clapping their hands and saying, man, is this game two? This might just be a 2-0 for you guys because this is easy for us. Yeah, I don't really, I'm not sure I like that, what, what Gator Freak was doing. I don't know why he thought he could, he shouldn't, he shouldn't have tried to contest Scuttle in such a, such a poor matchup. You see a lot of people, if they're playing the Sejuani into really any jungle pick, they, they just try to stay back unless it's against another passive tank jungler like a Zac because they did do a lot of nerfs to some of her base damages in the early game. And then he just walked poorly by the wall and they capitalized and stole first blood from that wife steal bot lane after they uh, earned it from blowing, you know, Clinical's flash earlier in the game. Uh, unfortunate for Dan here, our good buddy Dan. But we see Heimer Doodle Doodles looking for a lane gank. Maybe you're gonna prioritize on Austin Gator, especially with Sign having red buff. This is uh, very scary for Austin Gator. Gets the slow, gets the auto, connects. Oh, they no. have the damage. Finish it off the flash. Auto's gonna be enough. Oh. Takes up a kill. And that, easy clock. Already with a 3 0 lead four minutes in. I'm sorry, but that flash tilted me. Like, he, he, it was like he didn't, he didn't flash where he wanted to and he just stood in place right after the flash. And I think Austin Gator should have survived that if he just flashed instantly before Sion could even get an auto off on him. He should have just flashed as soon as the, the smoke screen came down. Yeah, I th yeah. But, especially as soon as the smoke screen lands, you just flash like you can't be greedy with flashes or else they just punish you so hard. Yeah, not only was he greedy, it was just a bit of almost a fail flash where he just kind of stood in place for a second after he flashed. Yeah. So <laughs> that's that's quite unfortunate. Uh, yeah, actually the balling of Easy Clap able to 2v3 for a bit as we see the TP going in from Joystick. He's not level 6, but they might get the damage off. Luda gets ignited, but I believe that Triumph rune coming into use there as Luda is able to stay alive. Wait, is Luda running the Triumph? If so, that's pretty, that's I, I pretty baller. So. Uh, yeah, I think he is because uh, as soon as oh, they got that man. kill off on, uh, I believe, Gator Freak, uh, he got that small heal able to outlast that ignite. I'm sure that's... I think that left fleet really needed to slow down the game. I think they're getting a bit antsy because they see that they're falling behind and they're trying too hard to force force plays. And it's just getting them a little bit further behind here. I think uh, Easy Club are just winning because uh, they have matching skins. Both the uh, support Luda <laughs> and Danks are going for that high noon uh, synergy there. It gives them that extra power spike if you didn't know. I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, we, we don't have any more uh, skin buffs. Like, what is it, the... I remember they used to have, like, minor trivial buffs, like one... Oh. Oh, we see Gator Freak once again getting caught out. Gator Freak's always in a bad position. Scattered of the week connects as Molten Liquid gets taken out by Heimer Doodles. And Ludo wants more. He's one of the supports that likes to roam across the map. And he's making the plays. He's oh. doing a lot of work here. Oh, Pops, the Blast Code oh, Nature. Gator Freak does have man. not an escape. He's going to be able to queue over the wall and Luda and... Heimer is not able to quite finish off Gator Freak there. Yeah, shout out to Molten Liquid sacrificing himself to save the, his jungler. But unfortunately, that also did not, maybe he didn't have to blow the flash in trying to survive. But definitely feels bad that, you know, for Gator Freak, he really can't even go in, he can barely go in his own jungle right now without running into three opponents. It's yeah, have a rough time. looking at clinical autism, he's actually struggling a lot in this lane. A 46 to 30 CS. 
uh, between both these carries here. Dangshore having a, a fairly easier landing phase compared to last game, and Austin Gator doing his best to hold his lane against the Scion here actually has a slight CS advantage as well. In Clinical's defense, if you add the CS that his brand support stolen from him, he's not really that behind, but, you know. That's true. That, I, that is, that does still feel bad when you have the ancillary brand burn proc stealing your CS. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I can't argue with you on that one, as I see Luda looking maybe to hook on top of Clinical mm. Odds. It's not quite going to connect, but applying a lot of pressure, zoning off. Clinical odd test, and you're not worthy from this bot lane wave. Yeah, Easy Clap's doing a really good job at advertising these uh, high new skins because I honestly haven't actually seen them in action, but they do look pretty sick. Now I'm, I'm, I might I might be in, you know in the market for purchasing one now. I mean, the lasso <laughs> looks the lasso and the soul is just really on point. Yeah, I think the thresh one's really nice. I think the ergot one's also really good. There's an ergot one in case you didn't know. Oh, I did. My, I tried to convince my friend to get it, but he, he went with Crab God. Oh, uh, well, you gotta go with Crab God. Crab God's like, it gives <laughs> you like this insane buff that buffs your chances of winning by like 20% if you have it on. I mean, then, I mean, he has to go with them, right? I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, you can't yeah, blame yeah. him. There's no question. <laughs> uh, Puffles Mia actually ahead in this lane against uh, Molten Liquid does have two assists and look at the CS difference. You can't blame you're not worthy on this one now because 74 to 59, Puffles Mia doing a great job in this mid lane. I don't know, maybe maybe Unworthy did go mid lane and take uh, you know half a wave, but no, you're right, you, you really can't. <laughs> that, is, that is purely based on the early pressure Puffles has generated and Puffles is like, I'm not, I'm not gonna sit back and play this lane safe. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna make you, you know, on the back foot. I'm gonna push you back. And that's what he's been doing for almost the entirety of this lane phase. Yeah, they do spot out Puffles Me Up. Maybe was looking to roam up top lane a gank Austin Gator, but control wards the true MVP here as we are waiting for it to see what left click gaming's move is gonna be in order to maybe win game two and uh Austin Gator flashes mm -hmm. that Oh. oh, well. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. This is rather unfortunate because all members of uh, Easy Clap just disconnected. I'm, I'm not sure if. Uh, Can the other team. Does the other team know to pause? Can we uh, notify them? I'm not too sure. Yeah, that is true. We are. Hmm. Unfortunately, due to spectator delay, we just gotta hope that these. uh. Players on left click gaming are a bit sportsman like. I'm not sure if they realize. Okay, there is a pause. Uh, shout out to Molten Liquid. Good guy, Molten Liquid. Realizes that the enemy team all disconnected, so. Uh... Man, I wonder what happened. Do you think, like, someone just tripped on the outlet at the LA, uh, at the, like, cafe? The... And just ripped out all yeah, of yeah, Blue yeah. Side's plugs. Yeah, yeah, you know, you never know. Like, that could have happened, you know? I mean, it's probably not the most least plausible explanation. Yeah, so whoever tripped on that wire, we're blaming you on that one. I mean, maybe they, they tripped with their... Do, they, do you think they tripped on their left cleat or their right cleat? That's the real <laughs> question. That's what I want to know. Oh, no. Who, do you think left cleat actually wears cleats when they're playing together? I feel like they like, should, you know? They should all only wear, like, shoes on their left foot for luck. No, no, no. They can wear regular shoe on their right foot, but it has to be a cleat on the left one. Oh, yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That way, like, it just gives them that little buff. I think... I don't think they're wearing that because they don't have that winning uh, energy buff going on there. Oh. They are all slowly reconnecting. <laughs> you know, I think they got a significant advantage from the 30 seconds. Yeah, that's not fair. The, uh, the, clinical the... Ots has got, like, <laughs> CS for free because all the late opponents left. And now all the CS discrepancies that were mentioned aren't so bad now because now the Orion is uh, sitting at a 10 CS disadvantage now. Uh, clinical Ots is not doing so bad either. Oh. I think doesn't it doesn't that mean that they just join if they're reconnecting and disconnecting? So. I'm actually not too sure. Uh, 
I'm not too familiar how that system works because I personally don't disconnect that much. I it's been a while. You're jinxing yourself now. You're gonna do it uh, next year. You play. I have a wooden table here, so I'm gonna knock on wood, and it's not gonna happen to me. But looking at the jungle performance, I think Heimerdoodle has been doing a phenomenal uh, performance here. It kind of trumps over Gator Freak. You know, Gator Freak seems like he's trying to do the right thing, but I think Easy Clap are just two steps ahead of him, are just able to negate his decisions there, and that cost them two deaths already in this game. Yeah, it's... A bit unfortunate, but like you said, the brand really doesn't do much in this, like, they, I think they should have played this lane, like, a lot safer than they did. Like, once the flash was blown, he should have just sat under tower, honestly, and, like, seed CS, because if you are going to go all in on almost, like, season four, like, wombo combo team fight comp, mm -hmm. like, if you're just going to go for that, you need to just play safe, and you can't let any of your lanes snope like you can be down 20 30 cs but you can't be dead missing levels exp and gold you know that's that's what you can't allow to happen because the whole point of this lane to pick the vars brand is the i mean basically auto win level six so you just need to do whatever it takes to to just not die before level six and i don't think they did a great job of doing that yeah i definitely agree with you there it's very unfortunate as we are going to wait for the pause. So while we are paused, how are your solo queue games going, Jam or not? I'm not too sure if you're a big uh, fan of playing ranked they, or are you playing any they awesome stopped. I, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't been playing too much lately. I'm kind of no. waiting for the, the new season. Kind of wait for the new season a little. Or once they start, if they, if they roll out, I don't know if they're doing it this preseason or later. The, uh, what is it? Role-based rankings. Oh, the role -based? I'm kind of waiting for that. Yes, yeah, since <laughs> I'm according to according to the current rankings, I'm absolutely average, and I'm going to keep it that way. I don't want to. I don't want to drop. I'm afraid. You know. Okay. I'm going yeah, to keep where I'm at right now, and then are you playing any try, Odyssey? Maybe, maybe try to climb. Odyssey. I did play a couple of games of Odyssey. It's pretty. Okay. It's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I think I played a couple as well. I think it's only fun playing with friends. I can't play with randoms because. There's always that one person who disconnects, so your team's stuck, like, yeah, like playing the game with only four people, and it's not as easy, especially when you were trying to do Onslaught, but, yeah, I mean, is it the, hard, the hardest difficulty? Yeah, 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 Onslaught's the hardest Okay, difficulty. okay. I yeah. think I, I don't have that one unlocked yet. I think I only have, like, maybe Captain. I don't remember yeah, the difficulty. Captain's the second highest, so, no worries. Yeah, that might be it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the Captain's the second highest, yeah. <laughs> What do you play? I played a, a lot of Yasuo. I think Yasuo's pretty good. Yasuo's Yasu. pretty fun. I, I want to play like Jinx with the alt max. That was pretty that was pretty fun. Uh yeah. that was the most fun I had. Or from the like three games I played, I think. That was I think I played yeah, one with Jinx. Really I think I played busted. a Ziggs one. Okay. Yeah, there's some really yeah. busted augments for all the champions. Yeah, I saw that Reddit thread and I was like, should I just go for the most OP one or should I go for the fun ones? I mean, I think Malphite's, like, augments are really fun. I, I like the one where uh, his ultimate doesn't have a range. It just stops when you collide with terrain. So, yeah, that one sounds really cool. You yeah, you just, like, yeah, yeah but, except you drag every enemy that you run into, so... Yeah, oh, really? That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. So, like, if there's, like, a bunch of ads or something like that, and you just all... And you take all of them into one wall. <laughs> Honestly, I know people are gonna... I mean, I doubt... I mean, we have... A few dozen, a couple dozen viewers, but I'm gonna watch. I bet whenever they do the Malphite rework, that's gonna be part of this kit. They're testing that. Wait, that's is this gonna be a thing. For a rework? I mean, have you seen Malphite as a champion? <laughs> like, I mean... he's somewhere. He's somewhere on that list. Like, I am a firm. I will directly steal verbatim from. I can't remember if it was Kobe or Deficio. Uh huh. But Malphite does not exist as a champion when his ultimate is down. Like, that's that is just honestly how Malphite works. Yeah, like, yeah, he does not exist without his ultimate. So if they lower some power in his alt or like buff move some power around, I think it'll make him more a more fun and wholesome champion to play as and against. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I agree with you there. I, I don't think he's on the schedule to be uh, reworked right away. I think they're gonna focus on Kale. Yeah, he's some. Yeah, he's some. Well, he's not on like the immediate schedule, but he's on the list of people that need. Yeah, him. I know, that's what I know I'm Ezreal's he's next. The... Yeah, Ezreal's next, and it's gonna go. Kale. I don't know why Ezreal's next. He, it's he has to be a mini rework. Like it can't be anything. Too oh, hard. I think they're just gonna rework his W and his passive. They're literally just they're literally just changing his W and maybe his passive. I'm okay with his passive cha- being changed because it's basically a war solution passive, kinda. Uh, it's weird, like it's very similar to Lucian's passive, but but yeah. different. I, I think his passive is okay. It's just that I think the way people play Ezreal is not to auto attack. You auto attack in between your Mystic Shot cooldown, but I don't see that much value in the attack spin unless you're actually using it correctly. And most of the time, I mean, people aren't using it correctly. I know, but it's so much fun to watch the Korean. Some of the top Korean players play Ezreal because they're they're not they're not arcane shifting away. They'll Q, you know, they'll get their two autos, then they'll E, get their two autos. They're like they'll make sure they get all their auto procs off. Yeah, and we are back. Look at all this. The squad easy clap. We're gonna <laughs> chill in the fountain. They're saying, all right, we're done drinking from our fountain. They, we're back. Yeah, they got an the easy. Game. They got an easy buy. You know, they got free backs. Just minus thirty seconds of their time. You know. <laughs> yeah, we see a. <laughs> Uh, left click, gonna go ahead and get that uh, uncontested damage on that thought lane turret. That's not fair. It's alright though. As we're gonna see them position, maybe look to get this Ocean Drake. Oh man, look, they have a CS lead in the bot lane, you know, the that's 77 CS to the 74 of the of D Danksor. But uh, if you combine the brand CS. Oh man, yeah, you're yeah. right. Oh no. <laughs> That's... Now they're now it's now it's more even. But But if you combine the Thresh CS, it's 83 to 77. Oh! Joy Six in a bit of a pickle. He's looking to maybe a side ult away. Can he make it? There's Ooh. just so much CS. They're sandwiching him. They're not allowing him to actually flash in front, but they don't have damage oh. follow up as all oh, the turn. Oh, oh, this is no. why you love playing top lane is when you Destroy the opportunity oh to get my off. God. Yeah, and that's, man, that's joystick so <laughs> truck able to get a kill and survive it from that gank. Yeah, I mean Matsuda, he was definitely living, living the top lane dream of yeah. this, wow. playing a dot. <clears throat> oh? Hammer Doodles just got deleted there. Uh, that's what I'm talking about when you're playing against brand support. It's that threat of the stun and the passive. If you get that connect, the damage is absurd. As we see, I mean, Mia. Oh, oh scatter the weak flail. He fails. Oh, the flash no. Oh, no. Shop it on two members, but Molten Liquid is very much dead. As we see, Gator Freak looking to re engage. We see the TP from Scion. The ultimate is still down, but the pressure oh. is still alive. As Dan gets another kill for himself, he's on a killing spree. Joystick Truck looking to maybe continue this, but they're going to go ahead and take what they can get and leave. Yeah, see, that's what I was looking for out of the bot lane uh, with You're Not Worthy and Clinical. Just make, like, once they got six, they just deleted whoever, they deleted uh, Heimerdoodles when he, during that dive. And that's what they need, that's what they, they should have aimed for, but just without the Lucian having, you know, two or three kills before that happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're going to go ahead and uh, pressure this mid lane turret. I think this could be the first turret. They might have the way to clear. No, nope, they're not going to go. No, I, they won't I commit think, for I think, it. I think they could have got it, but it, they're just playing safe, which is smart. I mean, they have vision on the whereabouts of Gator Freak, I believe, a little bit. So they realize that he's in the vicinity. They don't want to risk that uh, going for that mid lane turret because we also did see Not Worthy roam up there as well. And we see that they're going to go ahead and just plop Dan and clinical autism in that bot wave never mind they're just gonna let dan get that free bot wave and xp as we see austin gator look for the 1v1 but hyper doodles is on top of molten liquid as they go and take out you're not worthy you're not worthy gets a kill up on luda it's a one for one trade as the re-engage from gator freak gets the glacial prison off and puffles me as Skyrim of the week but hyper doodles oh, in a bad spot no. dan is on the way he flashes in the wild Ooh. turtle gets the double kill and they're looking for more. Gator Freak is on the run. Hyper Doodles get the, the auto attacks. He's getting slow from the Sejuani. Able to keep up. Maybe look to get the flash in. And Hyper Doodles gets the kill on Gator Freak. And <laughs> Austin Gator might actually get the kill on Joyce Thick Truck. Actually, no, he's all right. 
And this is gonna be mid lane turret going over to easy clap. Man, I'm a bit sad to see that left cleat were behind because these fights would have been like they're close as it is, but they'd have been closer and they might have even swung in their favor had they not allowed easy clap to get those early leads in the lanes they should have been playing safe in every lane they lose every lane they pick loses aside from maybe level three orn there was no way they could win any fights until they had their ultimates and now that they have them even though they're 6k down they still were so close to turning around some of these fights but i think now it might i won't go and say the game's over but i will say they're gonna have to play a lot more safe and a lot more coordinated they have a lot to do if they want to look to actually win, and if that's what you're trying to say, which is actually fairly true. Dan just kind of just showed up and said, surprise, I'm still fed. And you guys are focusing all your abilities and wasting your cooldowns on my teammates, but I'm here, and you guys are all going to die. Yeah, I almost would have liked to see that brand actually be maybe the carry in the bot lane, and then maybe they picked a support. Or maybe not support with CC, but the fact that they have all their damage on the bot side of the map, you know, and they try to go for that dive top lane. Ooh, we saw a flash yeah. of a whiff. That was clinical. a missed uh, chain of corruption coming out from Clinical Autist. Not going to have that uh, up for quite a bit. It's on a fairly short cooldown, so not too bad that he missed it, but it was a ambitious move coming out from Clinical Autist. Like, maybe they could have gone with a... Uh, CC support, maybe a cannon in the top lane or something, if they really wanted to go all in on this AOE wombo combo. Yeah, Luna getting chunked out. That's the brand damage. Oh, man. Want to know what that's looking like? Uh, that's just a Sork Boot brand. A Sork Boot and one Amp Tone. I mean, that's a lot of that's magic. That's a lot of damage. That's crazy. I... I... I mean, like I said earlier, I know he, he would have lived if he was wearing Merc Trunks, but... Got those Zerkers on. No chance to live there. And I hope he starts to build I itemize some MR. As it's too item inefficient to go sell his boots and change them, but... I would have liked to see him buy Merc Trunks in the first place. Yeah. I'm not sure if Merc Treads is the name of the game. We do see Joystick Truck I'm gonna opt for that Merc Treads. I think what Easy Clap has to do, as long as they are looking for fights where not where these not relevant or within the vicinity, or they just pick off uh, not worthy, then they should be able to win these fights fairly easy. Yeah, I I, I could see that um, perspective, but there is a lot of magic damage on the team in general, where you're never you you're not gonna normally get four to five champions worth of magic damage. Yeah, and they oh. are able to get the kill on Clinical Autist. Luda, Luda looking able to get the kill on Noteworthy. Gonna flash away, does not connect with the player play. Skyler, but we connect and shut down. Going over to Pubbles and Man, that's bot lane turret going down. Easy clap coming out on top. Not the cleanest dive, but perfect turret aggro juggling by them. So I think that does make up, compensate for the fact that the dive wasn't the cleanest looking. But as you said, you know, they did get... I know he's ahead, but if they were even, or even behind, I would have liked to see him if he was a bird trick. Yeah, Dank has to be careful. He's 1v2ing. Click on the lantern. Click on the lantern. Not able to. Stun from Gator Freak. Able to get the shutdown gold. As we see Puffles, Mia, totally pop that Orianna. And the Gator Freak has to be careful. Gonna take that blast cone. He's able to safely get away. Yeah, Gator Freak's been having quite an unfortunate series. He hasn't really had two much of a positive impact in either of these games. Uh, I, actually, no, he did do have a really good turnaround in the first game before they had that minor throw at Baron. Yeah, uh, I, say yeah. Throw, I say throw, but they weren't really ahead. That was just minor miscommunications where if they would have gave the Kaisa the honey fruit, they could have easily taken the Baron and got themselves back in the game. Yeah. Most definitely, but Shutdown Gold does go over to Gator Freak. Uh, about 750. Uh, that's a bit of a fat stack, if I do say so myself. Going over <laughs> to the, that Sejuani. So Dan just kind of donates a bit of his uh, rewards and price bounty over to their jungler. But at this moment, they're posturing for this Ocean Drake. It's the second Ocean Drake. Uh, feels pretty nice to have two uh, Ocean Drakes, because that just means you have so much sustain. 
Uh, a lot of poke coming out as well. So they're gonna be able to spam the poke from Syndra, the Lucian. And fairly easy for Easy Claps to turn this around and probably end this game sooner or later. Because at this point, Dan is just so strong. Uh, he's 5 and 1, totally outclassed in clinical autist here. Yeah, the ocean will help them. I mean, normally, I mean, it's it even though it is considered the weakest stack, but having this stack early when you're this far ahead, once you start sieging, you just may not even have to go back, and that's normally the only downside to being in the enemy's base so early is that they're close. Uh, where if they don't, if they get chunked out and don't die, they can just run back to fountain and then you know easily join the team. But if you're that close and you have the double ocean, once they get Baron, it'll be fairly easy for them to siege because it'll be difficult for left fleet to really withstand them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you there. But for, in order for left fleet to maybe make a comeback, they just got to look for good picks and play off not worthy because at this point, not worthy is kind of their best bet. So maybe look for these... Uh, picks here as Luna connects the hook and Sky of the Week is able to pop Bolt oh, Liquid here as the Brandleton is going to wing through and it's chunking out members. Sky of the Week connects on top of Gator Freak and Hyper Doodles gets the kill. Austin Gator is going to get caught out and Joyce the Trucks gets the kill for himself. And man, this Easy Clap just has a substantial lead on top. And <laughs> uh, Hyper Doodles tries to channel out Shelly, but. You're not worthy, uh, able to stop that, but he gets caught out by Sky of the Week. And Pumpus Nia is landing these Sky of the Weeks like it's nobody's business. I mean, both mid laners did a really good job of landing Sky of the Weeks this year, in this series, um, regardless of who was playing the Syndra. So maybe, you know, if this game were, it would have been interesting to see if this game would go to uh, game three to see, you know, the priority on the Syndra pick, or if they just would ban it out, because it does seem that whoever had it, was, you know, dictating the lane for the most part. Yeah, I'm also looking for some hot barrier. Dan gets caught out by the shockwave, but is able to stay alive as Luke looking to maybe escape. They gotta be careful here. They do have an Orn and Sejuani. Lots of CC there as Luna connects the hook on top. Dan has to be careful for us to E away as they abandon their good old pal Luda. And that's a one for one trade. <coughs> Luda getting the kill on Molten Liquid. So it wasn't the worst case scenario going over. Yeah, if you're left cleat, you're gonna take that. I mean, you normally don't want to <laughs> trade, but I mean, when you're behind, ooh, but well, you don't want that though. But, yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> I mean, Pumples Mia is just so ahead. 7-0, just able to pop R and get a kill on Austin Gator, like nothing. Yeah, that that's a. Uh... Orn with only a Null Magic Mantle and Merc Treads to a fully stacked steel two item Syndra. <laughs> so yeah, that's a lot of damage being dealt to him. Really needs to rush that, um, what's it called? Is it Helm? Yeah, it's not Abyssal. I think it's Helm. Adaptive, Adaptive Helm? Helm? Yeah. Yeah, that'll help a lot against the brand passive. Um... I think something that, yeah, that low joystick truck should look to build. Um, I think, yeah, he's most likely going to go for that. The I don't think he's going to build go. it. The, or the orange should build it too, though, for the Syndra alt and for Syndra damage. I don't think he'd want that because Adaptive yeah. Helm is really good uh, for repeated effects. I think Syndra is more of a combo champion where there's not consistent damage. It's more of, oh, I'm just going to up. Each, each ball counts, though, against it. Like, I don't know yeah, if people know that. Yeah, so that's, it, does, just, it doesn't mitigate the burst if she's is running away with the game like she kind of is right now. Yeah, I think he's better off maybe going for a Spirit Visage or uh, Abyssal. No, I don't, I don't think Abyssal Mask. I think Orange is better off getting Spirit Visage at this point. I don't see much use in uh, Adaptive Helm. Maybe. I don't know. I feel like you might as well get the... I don't, I don't think the... I think like the minor benefit from the Helm offsets the minor deficit you're getting for not getting Visage, but it's definitely, I guess, a uh, personal choice in this case. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, we, we see Easy Clap stacking themselves in that bush. It's the death bush. They're gonna get a hook, and it does connect on Clinical Autist, and Hyper Duplex gets the kill. Uh, Call the Forge God goes through. 
They gotta look to disengage. Glacial Prison connects on Luna, not the right target here as the flash trick does not connect. How many gets a kill on Austin? Gator not worthy getting taken out. A double kill going over to Heimer Doodles. And Team Easy Cloud maybe looking to do this Baron now. I mean, that is going to be a free Baron for them, so I think they're just going to take it and then push down one or two in Hibs and then recall. And like the, you said, they have double ocean. They're going to start to heal up pretty soon. But yeah, that's quite unfortunate. And I didn't get a chance to point it out earlier because there were just too many skirmishes. But I did not like Molten Liquid going for it. I, it did, yeah, the it just seemed like a terrible decision. Yeah, Gator Free getting caught out. Force the flash Ooh. away. Maybe looking to take this Baron away, but we're going to go ahead and take out the jungler. With the jungler out of the picture, then this Baron is in the hands of Easy Clap. Definitely a lot cleaner Baron than the one we saw last game. Um, but you know, that that is quite unfortunate for Left Cleat Gaming to have fallen behind so heavily in the beginning. Because they did have, there were a lot of fights that were so close to turning. But their opponents were just a little too strong for them to handle. Yeah, at this point, I'm not seeing much of an opportunity for Left Cleat Gaming to make a comeback here unless they're able to get Clinical Autist alive during these fights. Then there's the damage. Also, they got to keep Mount Worthy alive as well. But if they're not able to do that, then this game, this might be a 2-0 going over to Easy Clap. Yeah, they're down 16k gold at this point. I'm not sure that they can come back in this game unless they do a fantastic job of stalling out the game for quite some time. Or they just, uh, or it comes down to Easy Clap just kind of dropping the ball and throwing very hard, which would allow for uh, Left Cleat Gaming to make a comeback. But at this point, they're just kind of pressured with the Baron buff, looking to get this bot turret. Luna not getting these hooks in, so they're not able to look for the picks. But it essentially comes down to if Luna connects a hook on either any of the carries, then. They go for the fight call, the Orchard goes through, Glacial Fisher not connecting on anyone. And the two-man knockup, they get down Luda and Hyper Doodle, so they're on the run. But Dan gets the kill on Gator Freak, and he's kiting him out. He's still alive. You got to kill Dan here, but they're able to kill Clinical Autism. The TP from Orin able to keep him alive there, and the TP goes through. He's able to stay alive, but that's not relevant because wow. Dan Freak just pops. Not worthy. And this is almost an A is going through for Easy Clap. They're already on the Nexus turrets. This is game two going over to Easy Clap as Austin Gator just gonna go ahead and dance flash and enjoy his time. And there, it's gonna be an A is going through. Easy Clap gets the 2 0 on Left Cleat Gaming. Eventually. Yeah. Eventually. And... Wait. Oh. Almost. There we go. Yeah, and, and with that, uh, you know, easy with the clap clap of left lead, unfortunately for them. They did put up a great showing. And they were just, just almost that they just let their opponents get a little too much in the early game to give them a chance to really make it out with their better late game team fights, team fighting comps in both games. Yeah, it's quite a sight to see. We see Molson Liquid 1 and 8 on Oriana, so. Obviously, thought he was, wasn't able to optimize the pick as well as Puffles Mania did in game one. And I mean, yeah, like you said, it was more about him not, he didn't get, he didn't play as nearly as safe as Puffles did, you know. Puffles did a really good job at, you know, absorbing pressure when he was on the opposite side of that matchup. Yeah, and <laughs> it's quite a sight to see, especially just so much damage going through. Puffles Mia did around 22.9k damage that game. So, whew, that's a lot of damage if I do say so myself. Yeah, it's pretty nutty. Yeah, there were some times where Left Click Gaming looked like they did have a chance of making a comeback. There were some really good team fight initiations, but no damage in the follow-up just wasn't there. Yeah, I mean, they were, like, on the top side when they went for that gank that went awry in the top lane, they didn't have enough damage to lock down the Scion, even though they had him locked in place for a good three to four seconds. And on the bot side, they had so much damage, but they didn't have any CC outside of 
before they hit level six, you know, with the Varus, that they just there was there was really no threat on Luda to prevent him from making plays where he just had his pick, where if he 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 landed a hook on either Bran or Varus, he knew that was going to be a flash blown. And I think and, that's on left click gaming because they didn't do too much. They kind of exactly like, they didn't punish Luda or Dan for not having Luda in lane. They just let Luda roam around the map looking for picks, applying pressure, and it just made Gator Freak's job a lot harder than it already was. I concur. If they just they had a nice team comp, but they didn't really play around their team's weaknesses well enough for them to come out on top. Yeah, I, I do agree with you there. You know, they did have a very intimidating team composition, especially with team fights, but it just doesn't matter if your team fighting comp isn't able to team fight with such a uh such a like a huge deficit between your opponent because looking at the goal lead it was quite huge there. I believe it was around I'd say twenty K. Yeah, it's around twenty K gold lead there. Going yeah. over on easy clap and once again i don't even think there was any towers falling on the side of easy clap left click gaming not even able to chip away one turret yeah all series actually not even just this game because i don't like you said i think they didn't get a turret last game either it's rather unfortunate and none of these objectives were contested i think it just comes down to the vision score provided by luda uh, the amount of control and tempo they had throughout the series just allowed them to get a nice clean 2-0 over to easy clap. Yeah, I still think the first game was a lot closer than the score indicated, or it was a bit closer. Like, if it wasn't for that one, we like, we've we, we been bringing it up, the one mini throw at Baron, the game would have been even, and I think left cleat might have been able to even take it, you know, if they had to, if they executed their superior team fighting comp. Yeah, I agree with you there. Left Click Gaming totally dropped the ball on that one. They had an opportunity game one to come back, but unfortunately the call wasn't the best one and it cost them the game, allowing for easy clap to sweep game one. And as we saw just now, game two was a fairly easy sweep for easy clap. But once again, thanks for joining us, folks. We're going to go ahead and cut it to a break while we wait for the upcoming matches that might come up. There might not be, but thanks again for joining us. This has been Matsuda and my co-caster, Jammernaut. Take it easy, folks.